so time to, to start. Thanks everybody to, for coming to my session. Today we're going to talk about OF2 for native apps. We're going to see how we can implement it in native application and uh, what are the challenges we have to overcome. I'm going to drive you through the story of Joe, a kind and nice iOS developer who wants to implement a shoot and share application. It's just an application that take picture and uh, share them on, on Facebook or Google Plus. Uh, once we know the basic of the flow, I will just open uh, Xcode and show you some code. Uh, you will see some Swift code, and uh, we'll see how we can implement uh, using AeroGear iOS OF2 library. And last, we will do a quick peep um, at server side and see how we can implement our own OF2 uh, REST endpoint using key clock and uh, AeroGear SDKs. But first of all, let's introduce myself. My name is Corinne Krisch. I work for Red Hat on the AeroGear project. I am high OS tech lead. Uh, what, what, what does it mean? It means that my day-to-day -day job is to write Objective-C code. And more recently, actually, we, we're writing a lot of Swift code. Um, when I'm not coding, I love writing about coding, so you can read my technical blog post uh, on currentcrish.org. Or you can also read me on the iOS um, Raven Dalish um, tutorial team. When I'm not writing, I mean coding or writing about coding, I love chatting about coding with my fellow uh, Dutch chess friends and also at local user groups. So you can find me, South of France, at the GS Sofia, for example. So let's start the story. Uh, as you all know, you know, real discussion always happens at coffee break. So here we are on Monday morning. There is our developer, Joe, who um, come back from the weekend kind of worried, carrying a heavy bag of documents. Uh, and you can see it's written who have two specifications on the box. And he says uh, he bump into um, Mary, another mobile uh, developer. And she proposed, uh, do you want a cup of coffee? He said, oh, I'm kind of busy. You know, I've got to go through all the OF2 specification because I need to write this uh, shoot and share application my boss wants me to do. And it's going to need to um, share the photo on Facebook, Google, and all this kind of thing. Don't worry, say Mary. You know, I've been to um, the chess hand and, and I know all about uh, OF2, actually. Um, that's really great. You made my day, say Joe. <laughs> so to start with, you know, I don't know anything about OAuth 2. What, what kind of problem we're trying to solve with OAuth? On one hand, say, Barry, on one hand, we have API, API services that basically services like uh, Twitter API that uh, get you a list of uh, followers, uh, get you a list of tweets, and, and so on. And these services uh, under your confidential data, and those data are secured by your account with the login and password, which is just fine. But on the other hand, you have got lots of applications that would like to access those data and those APIs, so applications like Unfollow Me or whatever, I mean, many applications. And the question here is, do you trust all these applications to give them your login and password, your Twitter login and password? Do you want your login and password to be all over the internet? Uh, maybe not. So therefore, there is OAuth. OAuth is a way to allow users to grant access to third-party applications without sharing the password. We, call, um, we talk about the delegated access between the uh, mobile app and, and the web resources uh, using what we call a security token, which is called the access token. So we'll see in more details. What are the different actors involved in the OF2 dance? So on, on one side you have the authorization server who is in charge of authenticate, authorize, and give you a temporary um, and give you a sorry an access token. You've got the resource server who is responsible of giving you resources, checking that the uh, access token is valid. You've got the resource owner, 
who basically is the, the end user of your application, it could just be you. And we've got our client app, and in our case, because we're kind of talking about mobile app, here it would be a mobile app. The interaction between those actors are described in the OF2 spec as ground flow. And there is different type of ground flow. You can group them in two families. There is a free-legged flow where a user actually grants access to, and there is a two-legged flow where you just um, provide the credential in a form either of login password or client ID, client secret. So what is the best grant flow to fit the shoot and share use case? For, um, um, to choose the best grant flow, it's just boiled down to two questions. Is your client app capable of securely storing an access token? And, um, and um, is your um, But never mind. The, the, the best uh, choice for, um, for shoot and share application would be the authorization grant flow. Before we delve into the, the detail of the authorization grant flow, I would like to start about an important first step, the registration. It's not actually a step, it's more a prerequisite. So if you want uh, to have an application that shares photos on Google+, Plus, for example, you will have to open your Google uh, Cloud uh, Development Console. Uh, you create a project, you fill in the forms. Within these forms, there is an important information to provide. It's the redirect URL. You need to, to provide this information. Uh, this um, information needs to be unique. So by convention for iOS application, for example, uh, Google uh, advised you to, to use the bundle ID, which is, um, which is unique. For Facebook, for example, it's slightly different. Uh, you, you, you provide the FB plus the client ID directly. At the end of this um, registration process, you will be provided with a client ID and a client secret and you're actually all set to implement your shoot and share application. The first step in the OAuth 2 grant flow would be to um, <clears throat> authenticate grant and get this temporary access token. If we go in more detail from a mobile uh, point of view, mobile app point of view, for example, here we've got our application, we took a picture of the cat and we want to share it to Facebook. The mobile app will send a request uh, to the authorization server asking for an authorization code. <clears throat> the app switches to an external brother. So here you see it's an external brother, but actually you've got different way of implementing that. Either you can go for an external brother or you could go for um, a web view, an embedded web view. So there is pro and con from different approaches. Um, web view provides better usability kind of um, aspect, but the uh, external browser approach is seen as more secure because basically you don't have um, anything, sit your app is not sitting between the logging form and the provider. So you're not the man in the middle. So here the external browser is launched. You need to enter your uh, credential, you log in, then uh, the authorization server um, will forward that to um, the grant page. So a grant page will pop up asking you, would you like to um, let shoot and share access your photo, for example. Once the user click OK, the um, authorization server will forward you to the application, back to the application using this redirect URL that we talk about during the um, uh, registration process. Uh, and it's also mandatory to pass it, uh, we'll see more in detail, but to pass it within the request. And it has to match. So this redirection URL is very important. Second step, once you've got this temporary authorization code, it's a very temporary code, you need to exchange it to a proper um, uh, token. 
So your mobile app will send um, a request to the authorization token asking for an access token. The server will um, answer back with an access to token and expiration date and um, a, optionally a refresh token. We'll see later how it works. And then simply using this access token, you can access the resources um, that you are allowed to access. And that's it, you know, it's basically just a simple flow. Uh, but does this access token live forever? Actually, no. Usually most of the token uh, expire within an hour and you have to um, get a new one. The good news here is you don't especially have to go through the grant authorization process, so you don't have to pop up uh, the user to grant access. Uh, if you have this refresh token, you can transparently just um, do the request, ask for uh, an access token, and you, you will have a new access token. That's cool, said Joe. So now I'm all set, I can go and implement my own um, uh, shoot and share application. But if I want to do it just after our coffee break, um, if I want to do it on iOS to start with and, and on, to share on Facebook, what are my different options? On iOS, you can either use the social framework, which is provided by Apple. Uh, it's great, but um, it will fit you well if you want to share with Facebook. But if you want to go to Google Plus or or the provider, that's, that's not part of the list. You know, you can see in the settings, actually, you can see the list of provide, the provider that are supported. So it's quite limited. Same thing, you could, um, another option would be to go for the Facebook SDK. It's a great SDK, well documented, but again, it's limited to Facebook in this case. If you want to go for Google Plus, you will have to, um, um, import a new dependency and use the, the, the Google, um, sorry, well, yeah, to use the Google SDK. So there might be, maybe, maybe there is some kind of open source library that could help us, you know, uh, be able to share my photo on Facebook, Google, and using only one library. And yes, indeed, there is, and that's uh, uh, Aerogear. Um, so you can use uh, Aerogear iOS Web 2 or Aerogear Android Web 2. Uh, all the Aerogear library are declined in um, um, iOS Android and, and soon actually we're working on uh, Windows. Uh, we, we have uh, also JavaScript library and when needed we have Cordova plugins. But better than just um, talking about it, Oh, and I uh, forgot to say also, we don't just provide, um, Aerogear uh, doesn't just provide a client SDK, we also have some server parts, uh, like the unified push server, for example. But if you want to know more about it, um, I would recommend to see the keynote on Wednesday and we'll see it in action. So maybe uh, let's have a look, let's have a demo and see it in action. So let's open uh, Xcode. Uh, here I've got my uh, storyboard. Um, in a storyboard, I've got two buttons, one to take picture, one to uh, browse the camera roll, but most important here is a share button. Here I've got my share method. I can do different sharing with Google, with Facebook. Um, and uh, you see that the method is empty, so I'm going to show you how to implement uh, the share with uh, Facebook method, for example. So here you need to do, um, so that this is uh, some Swift code, by the way, if you can see it. Uh, here we're going to define a Facebook configuration. Um, in this Facebook configuration, we'll just put the client ID, client secret and the scope. Uh, Facebook configuration is um, already providing all the OF2 endpoint that you need for Facebook. Then we use an account manager that will um, basically create a factory method to create the OF2 modules. The OF2 module is a module that will be in charge of doing all the OF dent for you. But the good news is you don't um, really have to do it yourself. It's, it's done for you. We're going to use also the HTTP object. 
which uh, is coming from the uh, uh, another Airogear library, which is uh, Airogear uh, iOS HTTP, simply uh, name it. Um, this HTTP object is just a thin layer on top of the NS URL session, and it allows you to do a uh, REST endpoint, I mean HTTP call, and also do a uh, JSON serialization in Swift. Um, it also integrates well with OAuth 2, because as we'll see here, we're just going to instantiate HTTP, HTTP then um, in my HTTP, I've got a, um, a member where I can just assign it the uh, OAuth uh, modules, and in this, in this way, the, actually, the um, HTTP object knows that um, it has to use OAuth 2, and then I can just use my HTTP here. I want to upload a picture, so I simply use my uh, post method to uh, post to um, Facebook upload URL, and then I just implement the uh, callback method. Here we're going to test if the, the, if the, the method was successful. There was an error or not, and we all ready actually to uh, launch the application. So here it is. Is there an error? If there is uh, an error, I would just simply uh, put an alert pop up to say, okay, there was an error. And if if there is no error. Simply do a pop-up also to uh, to say that the picture was uploaded. So we all set. Maybe do a, a bit of forward. Okay. So here I just say okay, the picture was uploaded. So we're going to launch the application. The application is building and then launching. And we're going to um, select a picture in the camera roll. And I'm going to say, okay, I want to share it with Facebook. Here you see uh, the browser is open. It's really Safari here. And I'm going to enter my uh, credential. So here's the external browser approach I was talking about. There is nothing in the middle. And once I've done my login, I'm going to be f forwarded to um, the grant page. So do you want to allow access? And oops, of course, because we forgot to implement the redirect URL schema. You could, remember I told you about this uh, URL schema which allow you to re-enter the application. Uh, one more step that is needed is actually to define it in the info pay list object uh, of your project. I mean, the info pay list is just a place where you define metadata. So here I'm going to define my redirection URL. And as I was saying, it's important that this ID is unique because obviously you may have several applications installed on your device and this ID will uniquely identify your application to go back to this application. So here by convention, convention for Facebook, it's a two-letter FB plus the client ID. Because this client ID is unique, so this way you ensure that this is unique. And another thing you need to do is in the app delegate uh, class, you need to implement the callback method when you're going back uh, to the application. You need to say, okay, now I want to carry on the OAuth 2 flow. So this is also very important. So you send a, an arrow gear notification to say, okay, carry on. The next step, as you, if you remember from the, the previous slides, the next step would be to take this, extract this authorization code and exchange it for an access token. So this time it's going to work fine. We're going to share with Facebook. We don't, we're not prompted to enter our login again because it's cached, it's already there, and then successful uh, upload it. So just fine. Now I would like to uh, show you a bit more in, in details, actually. Um, 
actually to give you some background here, I'm going to launch again the application. This time we're going to share with Google. Um, I've put a breakpoint on the callback method so that we, we can see what's, what's, what's going on in more details. I also open a, a tool which is called Shards, which allow you to, it's like Wireshark, which allow you to uh, see what's going on on the HTTP call. Okay, so we, we're all set up here. Um, I'm going to filter only the Google request. And here we're going to do the step again. Take a picture and share it with Google. So you see the 302, I'm redirected to the uh, login page. I'm going to enter uh, my login and uh, password to log into my um, Gmail account. And again, uh, here I am uh, redirected. You see again the 302, I'm redirected uh, to the grant page. And here I'm going to accept and boom, I'm going back to my application in the callback method here, you can see in the breakpoint. And what I want to show you here is, you can see if we spy a bit um, in the method, I can see this is my authorization code here. If I let it go, then I can see this request to the uh, token. Uh, this is actually the, um, the request to exchange the authorization code for uh, an access token. So you can see that there is a code as parameter and the type here. And in the response, oops, sorry. Okay, so we can see that uh, in the response, you actually got your access token um, with an expiration time and a refresh token over there. So your application can get this access token. And then the next step is the upload. And you can see that in the request, uh, we put the access token. And we've got a, a, a 200, a successful upload. So that's cool. Uh, I've, got, um, I've seen how it works client side, but now I'm trying to investigate, you know, to anticipate what my uh, product owner may ask me. And what about if he wants me um, to protect my own resources, um, <clears throat> my own response using OAuth 2. So Mary has an idea. She come back and she said, Ta -ta -ta your solution is KeyClock. KeyClock is um, another open source project it's, um, it's a SSO um, a project to secure your web app, mobile app, or REST endpoint services. The key concept uh, for key clock are um, in a realm. So you can create your own realm. So in this case, I'm going to show you a demo where we create a shoot realm. And uh, in this realm, we can create multiple applications. Um, in this case, it's really simple. I am going to use um, some Java, some Java uh, REST endpoint to upload photo, get photos. Uh, these are going to be protected by the uh, GBoss Whitefly adapter. And I'm also going to create a web app, uh, which is going to uh, require a login and password. And this web app will show all the uploaded photo. And this one is going to be secured by the uh, key clock uh, JavaScript adapter. And then last, uh, we're going to have some, uh, we're going to have a, a shoot and f a shoot third party, which is an OF2 client. And uh, that will allow us to upload photo to our own key clock server. So let's see it in action. So you can install key clock uh, with the all appliance distribution. So it, it come in bundle wide fly together. So it's very easy to just, you know, just you, you just launch it. Uh, you can have uh, all, all the demo are open source. I put the link at, at the, the bottom of my presentation. So you can just uh, clone the repo and install the application. Here I'm going to show you the key clock admin. So admin, admin, uh, the first time you will uh, be prompted to change your password. 
And here I am on the master realm, so I'm going to uh, need to create my shoot realm. So you can either do it using purely the UI, different click, or you can use configuration file uh, in the JSON format. I've got one available here. I'm just going to upload it. So here I am on the shoot realm. I want to show you the different application. So as I say, um, as I told you, we're going to have a, a web app, shoot web, and we've got, we're going to have REST endpoint secure with shoot services and also uh, OF2 client. And remember when I told you about the uh, prerequisite step that you have to do for Google here, it's exactly the same. It's kind of the, the form I need to fill in when I create my uh, OF2 client. So this is basically the same thing. This is a content of the um, uh, shoot realm JSON file that we just imported. Uh, so you can find all the application in the OF client. For example, here I want to show you what the um, uh, endpoint look like. It's just to get images, upload images and all that. What is interesting is how do you um, secure it with key clock. It's really um, non-intrusive. You do it, you can do it with the web XML. Here I'm just saying, okay, this is protected by key clock and this is the name of my realm. And uh, you also need a configuration file um, where you actually match the real name with the um, application name. Here is the shoot services. Uh, same thing for the web app. Now I'm going to show you we are going to use a key clock JavaScript adapter. And this one also use a configuration file that is just here. Sim simple, same thing here. Uh, I match to my realm and um, uh, I match to my application. And I've got my application uh, secure by key clock. So let's see this uh, shoot, uh, shoot web app. What does it look like? So it requires uh, an authentication. It's protected by key clock. So I just use a password. This is provided in, in the realm information. And here I can see it's uh, more or less an empty app for now. So uh, there is no picture. Eventually there will be some picture display here. So I just opened the uh, Android uh, emulator and the iOS emulator just to show you, the, you, you know, the same application uh, exists in iOS, but also in, uh, in Android, because you might be more Android person, uh, I guess, maybe. So you can find both demonstration. So here, same thing that we already saw. I'm going to share it, but this time with Key Clock. So here I've got the uh, login form from Key Clock, and I just enter my um, username, password, login, then again, the grant, page and I say yes and it's you, you can see on the background it's uploaded if I do it a second time this time I don't go through the step because I already have the access token and the library is the taking care of you is the access token still valid yes so okay I can go without prompting the user we can do the same thing on the Android uh, emulator so here I'm taking advantage of the real picture um, and then we just share it to key clock. So we're going to go through the same flow. The interesting thing to note here in this example is that here for the Android, we use an embedded web view. You remember I told you about either you go external browser or embedded web view. You see here it's an embedded view. You don't have the uh, URL that show up. So the, this <clears throat> works the same way. You log in and then we will grant access. Same page. By the way, this page can be uh, customized, obviously, uh, if you use the uh, Key Clock Admin Console. And then I just share it on Key Clock. And it just show up. So last, uh, I'll try it. The presentation was quite fast and I show you a um, different um, demo project. If you want to have a deeper look uh, into them, uh, here is the uh, entry point for you um, on the Aero Gear side. And also I, I give you the entry point for the Key Clock project. 
And you can also read me on the blog post. I've got plenty of blog posts on OAuth too, so if you want to know more in depth. And I think that's, um, that's it for me. So uh, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask. You can also reach me at Coffee Break, you know, like real question can also happen at Coffee Break if, if you don't have time. Thank you.